Hey family, how are you guys doing today? Um, I wanted to really deep dive on a subject that really kind of bothered me and I just want to get it off my chest and I hope <coughs> that you guys will share with me your open opinion about how you feel about this particular situation. You know, one of my, I'm, of course, being from Wisconsin, I done went through all the quarterbacks, um, Mikowski, and I remember Brett Favre coming up right behind him, and us, everybody that pretty much saw him play the first game, we knew, ooh, this guy is the truth. So I was always he was I was always um a fan of Brett Favre. And I'm gonna tell the truth. I was always a fan of him. Had his jersey. I am a Packer fan. I love the Green Bay Packers. Um go up to um Green Bay. The Packers training facility a lot. But you know, <coughs> excuse me, when George, when Brett Favre said, he's, there's an article. And just, well, let me just share it with you. Brett Favre has found himself on the end of more liberal fury than NFL icon asserted. It was hard when he asserted it. It was hard to believe that U.S. cop Derek Chauvin intentionally meant to kill George Floyd. Chauvin, 45, was convicted of killing Floyd. Of course, you guys know um, it allowed the whole world to be shook because for nine minutes we watched this guy Keep his knee on George Floyd's neck. In fact, he liked it. And he kind of dug down in it with his knee. He was making sure that George Floyd couldn't breathe. And we all saw it. That's why the whole world woke up. Because they couldn't believe that they actually had witnessed a murder. Now, like I said before, I probably would have, knowing me and how I feel about things, I would have went into the store, I was right there on the store, and I would have grabbed some cans of peas, whatever, and I would have threw them at them. And I probably would have been shot or either they would have started apprehending me. But I definitely would have threw something at him to make him break his hold. I just know me. Okay? And... Because it's hard to sit back and witness somebody suffering if you're a human being and not make any kind of attempt. I don't give a damn who's holding. Especially if you don't see the punishment is fitting the crime. Okay? You don't see a person resisting. You don't see a person doing anything. You just see somebody going all in on them. Okay? So, the fact of the matter is, once one person throws it, then the rest of them would have threw cans at uh, uh, um, Derek Shop. That's what I believe about the human spirit. Once the first person would have thrown, chunked a, a can of peas at him, everybody else would have been chunking cans of peas at the rest of those cops sitting there. Now, with that being said, I thought about that, that article and he said, um, I, the fact that he, I started thinking about Brett Favre. And then I thought about Sterling Sharp. I thought about the crap he talked about. He think he should honor his contract. And this, that, and the other one. He was being paid in every, more than everybody on the team, right? And a lot of y'all don't know Sterling Sharp because a lot of y'all didn't see Sterling Sharp play. But Sterling Sharp was the truth. 
He was one of the best wide receivers that I, the Packers ever had. And I'm talking about through John Jefferson, James Lofton, all those guys. Okay. So he got into Sterling Sharp's business. It's Sterling Sharp didn't talk to the press. He didn't talk to many, you know, that's who he was. He was real low-key. But he got Brent Favre off his ass. That we know. Because we ain't hear Brett Favre talking no more about dude's contract. Okay? This is what we know up here in Wisconsin. So I started saying, damn, Brett. You know, you 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 should keep your mouth shut when it comes to other people's money. But that's okay because I still love it. I love that gunslinger, how he used to cock that ball from his hip and just, whoo. Now, anybody might catch it. But he has some good receivers like uh, Freeman, Antonio, I ain't forgot about you, um, and all the other little uh, guys. Um, oh, my God. Just that whole team. Uh, so we we used to go up and then just watch Brett Favre, basically, just destroy the team. It, you would have thought that he would have won more Super Bowls. But of course, uh, Brett Favre made that comment, and a lot of people looked at him sideways because you know Chauvin is uh, in bars behind bars for keeping his knee on dude's neck, and he did it on purpose, and he tried to kill him. So most people said, "Fuck what Brett Favre thinks." Is and it's, and another, I think another football player said, "Uh, so Brett Favre had uh, made more of an issue when Colin Kaepernick took a knee on the field, and when Derek Chauvin took a knee on George Floyd's neck." Yeah, I got it. So, cause then I we start hearing rumblings that Brett Favre was racist, and that he had some racist tendencies. Well, you know, he's from Mississippi and all, and you know the soil there. For white people is racism. I mean, and it's the it's just the culture of I don't blame the people they grew up in that culture. I I blame them, you know, white supremacy is working the way it should work, okay? Because when you when you've been brought up to think that you're better than everybody else, and somehow amongst all that those lies and dysfunction, you find the truth about your humanity. I respect you more than anybody. So I always say when I meet a person and they're not prejudiced or and I should say have that racist, the power to do something to me. When I find somebody and they're not taking advantage of that, then I go, wow, wow, because America failed that person. Because everything in America's culture has taught white people to feel a different way. And so you can't look at it like in, in order for in order for my sanity. I can't speak for nobody else. This is how I look at it for my peace of mind. I kind of look at it like, well, if the school system didn't teach racism and in, indoctrinate people with racism, uh, and especially the white uh, counterpart, then that means that it's not doing its job because they need for this system to run like a fine-tuned machine. And the only way they can do that is by teaching lies and propaganda and this, that, and the other. So once you found, find somebody that can come from up under all that dogma, then you got to be like, what? Oh, shit, for real? Oh, wow. I, okay, so that's how I look at it. Okay? Brett Favre was a Mississippi boy, and he carried that in his blood, in his vein. Oh, yeah, he played with black guys. That don't mean nothing. You know, it's just like you work with white people. You work with black people. Well, that don't mean that you don't go home at the dinner table and talk about Negroes. Except you use the ER, the hard ER on the end of it. I get it. But Brett Favre starts saying a bunch of uh, uh, When he said that, there was a lot of responses to his... Uh, uh, um, foul comment. Okay? Somebody said, 
We need for police to handcuff Brett Favre and pin him to the ground, put their knees on him for nine minutes, and see how well he handles it. And these are all white brothers that said this. Brett Favre said the exact same thing about Derek Chauvin. What is wrong with him? How could he make such a statement? Okay? So this is what the majority of people felt when they uh, heard his racist-ass comment. So now I'm looking at Brett Favre sideways because I know that with cognitive dissonance, there's a lot that people have when they uh, love their favorite sports star or whatever. But I'm like, oh, this Southern Mississippi boy is really, uh, he really showing his ass. And then what got me? Well, I knew I had to cut the ties with this damn dude. It's when it says the nation's poorest state used welfare money to pay Brett Favre for speeches he never made. The state auditor says 70 million in federal welfare funds went to Brett Favre, a volleyball complex, and a former pro wrestler in a scandal that has rocked Mississippi. And they got water right now up the wazoo. Brett Favre earned nearly $140 million as a star NFL quarterback over two decades and millions more in product endorsement. But that didn't stop the state of Mississippi from paying Brett Favre $1.1 million in 2017 and 2018 to make motivational speeches out of the federal welfare funds intended for needy families. Now, let's just step on that for a minute. That's racist. He took money out of poor people's mouths. Okay? Because if you think that only black people in Mississippi is on welfare, well, let me give you a rude awakening. There's poor white folk in Mississippi as well. So we took it out of the welfare funds intended for needy families. The Mississippi State Auditor said Favre never gave the speeches and demanded the money back with interest. Now, Favre has repaid the fees, although not the 228000 in interest the auditor also demanded. But the revelation by the auditor that $70 million in TANF welfare funds was doled out to a multi-million dollar athlete, a professional wrestler, a horse farm, and a volleyball complex are at the heart of the scandal that has rocked the nation's poorest state. See, let's, let's don't talk about whether he paid it back or not because that's not the issue. The issue is how did, how did this happen? I'm tired of these Republicans ripping off poor people and then pissing and being pissed off about $10,000 being um, eliminated from student loans. People got to stand up to this type of injustice. Okay? I mean, this is the nation's poorest state. And so what it has done is sparked a parallel state and federal criminal investigation that had led to charges and guilty pleas involving some of the key players of this. Now, Favre hasn't been accused of a crime or charge, and he declined an interview. His lawyers, Bud Holm, said he did nothing wrong and never understood he was paid with money intended to help poor children. Yeah, right. You didn't give a damn. You didn't give a damn where the money was coming from. Holmes acknowledged that the FBI had a question about Favre in the case, a fact that hasn't previously been reported. The saga, which has been boiling at a low grade for two and a half years now, drew new attention in July when the state welfare agency fired a lawyer who had been hired to claw back some of the money just after he issued a subpoena seeking more information about the roles 
Brett Favre, the former governor, Phil Bryant, a Republican, played in this. The current governor, Republican Tate Reeves, acknowledged uh, playing a role in a uh, decision to sack Brad Piggott, accused the Bill Clinton appointed former U.S. Attorney General of having a political agenda. But the state official who uncovered an the misspending and fraud told Auditor Shad uh, White, who is a Republican, he's also who is the first person who uncovered the misspending and fraud. So, in his first television interview since he was fired, Piggy said his only agenda was to set the truth and recoup the U.S. taxpayers' funds sent to Mississippi that he says were squandered. The notions of tens of millions of dollars that was intended by the country to go to the alleviation of poverty and to see it going towards very different purposes was appalling to many of us, he said. Mr. Farr was a very great quarterback, but having been a great NFL quarterback, he is not well acquainted with poverty. Now, Piggott, who before he was fired, sued on behalf of Mississippi's welfare agency, naming Brett Farr and 37 other grant recipients, laid ultimate blame at the top feet of Mississippi's politicians, including Bryant. Governor Bryant gave tens of millions of dollars of this TANF welfare money to a nonprofit led by a person he knew well and who had more connections to his political party than with the good people of Mississippi who have the heart and the skills to actually cajole people out of poverty or prevent teenage pregnancy. <clears throat> now, in an interview with the website Mississippi Today, Brian said that he never knew the grants came from welfare money. His lawyer didn't respond to requests for comments. Don't believe that. When their mouth is moving, they're lying. They're lying. They are the masters of technology, and the lies they tell will tell bust the stomach of a brass monk. Um, now, the person in charge of the nonprofit group Piggott was referring to is Nancy New, a close friend of Bryant's wife. New and her son have pleaded guilty to state and federal charges and agreed to cooperate. New, a key player in doling out the money, said in a court document that Brian was among those involved in directing the transaction. Now, her lawyer declined to comment. Now, I want to know how these people get away with treating the poor people as bad. And just them paying uh, pleading guilty and not returning the money does nothing for the poor people of that state. See, it's one thing to say you did it or for us to find out that you did it. Some people admit it. Some people have to be uh, found out because they'll lie to the end. They're that narcissistic. But when we find it out, then I think the punishment that we need out should be in accordance with that. If you pled guilty right away, you're remorseful. You give me information that I know about other key players that did the same thing you did. Yes, you should get a lighter sentence. Yes, you should. Your sentence should be a little lighter than somebody who I, it took me to pull teeth to have to capture because they were on the run. They never admitted 
they don't have any remorse or any contrition about what they've done. Yeah, they should they should be handled a little different. This guy says uh this is insane to do the poor people of the, of the state that way. <laughs> now, as for Brett Favre, he defended himself in a series of tweets against allegations from White, the state auditor, that he accepted state money from speeches that he never intended to give. I would never knowingly take funds meant to help our neighbors in need, but for Shad White to continue to push this lie out and out the money was uh, money was for no show events is something I cannot stay silent about. Now that's what he tweeted. Now I want to know why, if that's the case, why you haven't paid back all the money? Since you made all that money, it was only a million something that you got. Why didn't you give it all back? Just like. You guys, nothing but liars and projections. It's just project projectors. The state auditor rejected Fire's defense in a series of tweets that pointed to the contract that he obtained and said, you can continue to use your megaphone as a celebrity to drown out the facts, but it will not change the facts. The speeches aren't only welfare grants tied to Fire. Text messages obtained by the Mississippi Today and authenticated by Pidget shows that Favre sought a three million, three point two million grant for a drug company in which he was a shareholder, and a five million award that built a volleyball arena at the University of Southern Mississippi, where his daughter played the sport and where he played football. Now, his, his, his lawyer refused to answer about that as well. The drug company Provacus was touting treatments to mitigate the effects of concussions, although none were approved by the Food and Drug Administration. In some texts, Farr suggested awarding shares in the uh, suggested awarding shares in the drug company to Bryant while he was the governor. I don't know if legal or not, but we need cut him in. Five text the company official in November 2018, referring to Brian. Now listen to that. I don't know if it's legal or not, but we need to cut him in. Now, if it was illegal, they would have figured out a way to cut him in. Or they just would have broke the laws because that's what they do. Following up three days later, Farr wrote, also, if legal, I'll give some of my shares to the government. Brian has said he never would have accepted such an offer. All of it remains quite a mystery, Piggott told NBC News, as to why Mr. Favre would get the benefit of a million dollars in TANF welfare money, both for uh, both for, fee for speeches that he didn't make, two million plus to go to a company in which he, ha he was the largest outside individual investor, and five million for his alma mater to play volleyball in a volleyball building. The state auditor said he found other no-show contracts benefiting uh, former pro athletes and family members of Davis, the welfare agency director. And they mad about $10,000 of PPP loans to be forgiven. And every one of those senators in Congress Or every one of those Congress people that received 
PPP money had their loans forgiven up to tunes of millions of dollars. But they get mad because some poor people had less than $10,000 uh, removed from their student loan. This is sad. And this is all from their poor recipients. They stole money. Brett Favre, who made over $155 million in just his playing days, like we said, we're not talking about his endorsement. The auditor said that Davis directed one contract to Austin Smith, his nephew, who was paid more than 400000 to provide coding skills classes, even though prosecutors alleged he had no such skills and didn't know how to teach. At least $3 million went to Ted B. DeBassi, a retired football wrestler. Marcus Dupree, a former college football star also received three hundred and seventy thousand in welfare funds, which prosecutors say partly went to fund his horse ranch. Paul Lacoste, who is the current governor's athletic trainer, was paid three hundred thousand in welfare funds to run a fitness boot camp for legislature. Legislators. Now, isn't that something? The Biasi, Dupree, and Lakanta didn't immediately respond to requests for comments. Smith has denied all wrongdoing according to the court filings provided by his attorney. The scandal has also spotlighted the meager scope of Mississippi's welfare program and provided a stark reminder of the Clinton era welfare reform that provided states with block grants and wide literature and how they spend them. So according to the state figures, Mississippi rejects more than 90% of those who apply for federal welfare benefit known as temporary assistance for needy families. Did you hear what I said? They reject more than 90% of those who apply to those federal funds. This year, 2,500 children receive benefits in a state with 192,000 poor children. Ooh, my God. One of those who had trouble getting help was Tamara Edwards, who raised four children her own while working a series of low-wage income jobs. You know, the one that paid bare minimum wage. They keep making you work long hours and keep you away from your children. And then when you, your children get out of control, they talk about you because they're going to lock them up in jail. See, it's a fine-tuned system that's running perfectly. It's a trap. She once received welfare vouchers for child care. And in 2009, she applied again. Even though her income was low enough, she was denied. They told me they didn't have any funds, she said. And this is from, oh, uh, this is the working poor. She works at Cracker Barrel as a cook. TANF has been a slush fund for some time, said Olita Fitzgerald, who is the director of Children's Defense Fund Southern Regional Office and is based in Jackson. Mississippi is the poorest doggone state in the country. Where is the money? What are they doing with it? There is nobody on welfare. Welfare participation rates are way down. So no one knows where the money is being spent. This deserves an investigation. I'm tired of my money going to oligarchs, thieves, corporate thieves, and the works. 
Republicans. I am sick of it. This is a real sad situation. Nobody knows where the money is spent. Aisha Nadaro, <coughs> the chief executive of the Springboard of Opportunities, a local nonprofit group that works with residents of affordable housing, said DHS will tell you that the reason they cannot go about allocating TANA funds is because they can't find any families who are eligible. Go outside and throw a rock. It's Mississippi. You can find an eligible family. Jarvis Dorch, a former state legislator who heads the state's chapter of the American Civil Liberties Union, said that when he was a member of the legislature, I could not get a list of how the money was being spent. Dorch said he had to resort to secrecy. Someone has snuck me a list. It didn't have a DHS logo on it. They had printed it out and snuck it out. White, the auditor, told NBC News that the investigation goes on. My office is continuing the work we started over two years ago on what is now the largest public fraud case in our state's history. We will continue to work on our states and federal partners to be sure each person is responsible for this massive scheme, uh, which is held and fully accountable and hold them fully accountable under the law. <clears throat> now, isn't this something they want to talk about? All the Democratic mayors uh, allow for violence, but all these Republican governors are doing massive schemes and stealing starting with Donald Trump. And the stupid dummies that back him, that's in the cult of him, the, he wouldn't even let you clean the shit off his shoes. He's a germaphobe. And he's allergic to poor people. And so those of y'all that's out there handing up the MAGA stickers, and I'm not saying all of y'all, but those of y'all who are poor, who work in coal mines, got straws hanging out your mouth. How stupid can you be? I hope Mississippi recoups all the money. And they need to do whatever they need to do to fix that water. Whatever they need to do to fix that water. This is insane. And I'm going to let this uh, play, and I'm going to um, wipe, wrap it up. Listen. Famer, Brett Favre's daughter played volleyball at the university. Text messages obtained by Mississippi Today show Favre saying, You have to make, okay. you have to make a choice whether you want to pay your light bill or whether you want to food on the table. Tamara Edwards raised four children on her own in Mississippi, applying for welfare benefits just once for child care while she worked. Each year, Mississippi gets $86 million in welfare money from the federal government, though the state rejects 90% of those who apply, including Edwards. When yeah, I, I did it is. apply, I was not able to be on it again because they told me that they didn't have the fundings for it. But the state was dispersing millions more of its welfare dollars, just not to families that urgently needed it. In court documents and audit reports, the state alleges that the head of Mississippi's welfare agency squandered more than $70 million intended for children in poverty. Instead, using it as a private slush fund to benefit his family and friends. Tens of millions of dollars on items like hiring retired pro wrestlers, first class air travel, a horse ranch, and $5 million to build this women's volleyball facility at the University of Southern Mississippi. That building with ties to an NFL Hall of Famer. Brett Favre's daughter played volleyball at the university. Text messages obtained by Mississippi Today show Favre saying he helped secure government grant money for a new arena. And he personally was paid more than a million dollars to give three motivational speeches that never happened. 
Favre declined to talk to NBC News, but his attorney says he has been questioned by the FBI. Favre says he never knew it was welfare money and paid it back after demands by state officials. Favre still owes $228,000 in interest imposed by the state auditor. I wanted to at least collect the facts. Former U.S. Attorney Brad Pigott was hired by the state to find the money. How is Brett Favre getting money that's supposed to get kids out of poverty? It's a mystery to us. Here we had tens of millions of dollars sent by the country to do the thing that we need done the most, and it was squandered. In July, he issued a subpoena to get more answers about that volleyball arena, including any communications between the university and former Governor Phil Bryant, whom Pigott says directed the spending. Bryant says he was unaware that welfare money was involved. What happened to you after you filed your subpoena? I was uh, terminated. The state welfare agency says it. they fired Pigott because the client and the lawyer were not on the same page. The investigation has only recently resumed. Welfare agency head John Davis was arrested and charged with bribery and conspiracy. He pled not guilty. The agency declined an interview, saying they are committed to rebuilding the trust of the citizens and making all future grant decisions by committee. So far, just $1.1 million has been recovered. We are real people. There's real people out there that really need that money. Ken Delanian, NBC News, Jackson, Mississippi. Trying on glasses yeah. using Warby Parker. Now, the thing about it is, I don't want to hear nothing why you got kids and yada, yada. I don't want to hear none of those kind of uh, comments. My, I want to stay on task, see, because I already know the projection. I know the gaslighting. For those of y'all in the comments section that's going to say something like that, I'm giving you a heads up. Don't even worry about that. What you need to do is just answer the question. What in the hell will make a person think that they are entitled to that much, uh, um, that has made that much money over their lifetime? Namely, Brett Favre. Okay? And whoever else received this money. When it was earmarked for poor people in that state. That's, that's the only question we need to answer here. Not nothing about what's going on in Chicago. Not talking about black on black crime. I don't want to hear anything but the answer to that question. And I want to know, do you also think that Brett Favre is a racist? What do you think? And it's really hard for me to ask and, and um, I want to know the answer to that question, but I already know it. I'm just asking it to see what you're going to say. Okay? So, now, leave your comments below. And if you like what you hear, please like and subscribe and share. And I'll see you in the next video.